All right, so here we are jumping right into things, wasting no time, uh, pulling out the back seat, and uh, either if the door is obviously pretty easy to pull those off. Uh, things are moving pretty quick here because most of this stuff is the easy part. Uh, removing the spare tire carrier on the back of the Jeep. And now moving the passenger seat. A lot of Torx bolts in here. You're going to want a lot of Torx sockets for doing this type of work. Um, these have been out before in my Jeep, so it wasn't too bad to get them out. But in a lot of cases, these could be rusted in. PB Blaster could be your friend on this one. And now starting to go to work on the seat belts. So there's the four, of course, passenger, driver. And then later on, so I get to the ones in the rear. And the sound bar. So the wires for the speakers and the sound bar are kind of run up uh, inside, or sorry, along the edge of the roll bars. So you can disconnect those and then ultimately take off the whole speaker bar just by undoing the zippers and then taking out the various bolts that are holding it on. And I'm doing those rear seat belts now and taking off all the pads. All right, so this is all the stuff that I've got out so far. As you can see the seats, and all the roll bar padding, um, driver seat still not installed, along with the seat belt connections and the rear seat insulations. Um, you also notice on the base of the towers where the rear seat belts reels attach, and those are gone as well. Up in the front, all I've really done here is flip down the window and taken off. Uh, the bracket there that connects it. And there's a little more view of the base where the seats came out. Alright, so to take out these bolts, I decided I'm going to heat them. And depending whether or not they've come out before in your Jeep, Heating them, smashing in the uh, torque socket here. You're going to need a lot of these torque sockets, by the way, so buy them in bulk or the close to a store where you can return them. And once I have that done, I use the impact driver. So you're going to want one of these too, these heavy impact drivers. So basically, it allows you to push down and, and apply a twist at the same time to help loosen and break the bolts out. I'm pretty sure I destroyed mine in the process because it quit working by the end. But you're going to have to go back and forth on this cycle quite a bit using some PB Blaster or Liquid Wrench as well. It's going to take a while to get these things used. Get used to this because this is going to happen throughout the entire day. So these have never been out in the previous one of the bars to land, so these are really cool. So you just kind of keep working on them until they come out. It's not a glamorous job. But you don't want to rush it and you don't want to use an impact tool because it'll just shred the heavy bolt right away and you'll have a bigger problem, which I'll show you here in a bit. Hey! Yeah, I'm happy about that. And then the other side is going to be the same. Yeah, this persisted, persisted throughout. So here's one of the ones where my bit broke off. So you see I was using a safety torx with the hole in the middle. First of all, don't do that. They break easier. But I'm going to have to weld a nut onto this one in order to get it off. And although this looks like I just put this together and it worked, I tried this about six or seven times to actually get the bolt out. 
And in the end, when it came off, I actually just twisted the entire head off. So even though the nut did manage to finally stick, uh, it just broke the bolt anyway. So you'll see later this side has a lot of rust underneath. So, again, you're... With the roll bar now detached, I was able to lift it up and move it out of the Jeep. It is kind of awkward, uh, especially when your vehicle's up on a lift like mine is. Not a bad idea to get help with this if you're not a burly gorilla like me. Alright, so here you can see what I was dealing with where it was rusted in. Uh, the one bulb is actually still in there, you can kind of see what's left of it. So this is ultimately have to be cut out and replaced. Um, the back looks a lot better. It came out pretty painlessly as you saw before. And on the far side, again, it looks about the same. And down here, it's a little bit rusty. This is obviously a low point in the vehicle for water to gather, but it was better than the other side. Next important step disconnect the battery. Uh, I'm going to start digging into the electronics here, so that's pretty important. We're not going to be needing this again for about six or eight months. And on this side, I'm removing the base where the uh, seatbelt was attached. Uh, it's, again, it's pretty rusted down this corner, so it takes a little bit of work to get these out of here. Working on the center console here. That's easy, there's just four bolts on the base of it. And what's left are the seat belts. And the carpets as well. Mostly just held down with Velcro. So you can see I'm taking pictures in throughout here, so that gets pretty important. And here's what we're looking at. Um, so obviously most of the flooring is out. Really haven't started tackling the dash yet. This is kind of a before shot, so I'm gonna put it back together again kind of what it looks like. A few screws up along here on the top of the dash. Uh, turns out those didn't help me too much right off the bat. And then all of these ones along the back. Again, more of these torques and it gets real rusty up in here. This is a new windshield on this Jeep. The one was completely rusted out because it does get wet back there. And now tackling the dash. So the glove box, as you'll see, ended up being one of the most difficult parts of the entire disassembly. I googled it a bunch, watched videos to see how other people handled this, but it was not easy. So I kept giving up on it and jumping back to things I knew how to do. So obviously here's the glove box. What you can't see is there's some hidden screws. And uh, just behind where my fingers are here, I'm going to get a shot of this when you look back here. If you look up behind, there's two Phillips head screws right there and there's also two on the opposite side as well and there's no room to get in there they're impossible to turn and you know well you can see how well it worked for me again I got tired of that so I started doing more things I thought I could actually do gave up on the glove box for a while for the most part just take out the screws that you see uh, it can be a little bit difficult. Take your time. Don't strip them. Cause that's going to just slow you down even more. Uh, pulling out the gauge clusters. So here I actually start looking at what I can do to get at this glove box. Uh, this seemed to be the best way to get at it. I got distracted again here and pulled out the radio and uh, the rest of the gauges. Uh, but ultimately, trying to get in here with a Phillips screwdriver just wasn't working. You can't fit a power tool in there. And finally, I just said, screw it. I'm going to literally just cut the screws right off. So here I am with a reciprocating saw. I tried a hacksaw. Uh, anything I can get in there to cut those screws off. Um, and ultimately, I think I, I finished it with a, a vibration tool. And there you see, I'm kind of working them out there. And it's just was agonizing. Again, this was one of the worst parts, the glove box of all things. Just trying to get that out of there. And I don't think I ever actually had video. The camera died long before I ever got it out of there, but 
nonetheless, as you can see, it is gone now. So it was a nightmare, and then the nightmare was over. All right, jumping back in on the other side, uh, working on the climate control system. So this is all old school analog. These are just cables and levers. Um, the cables are all held in with small plastic inserts, and those things are basically ready to shatter. Um, they're hard to replace too, so you want to be careful when you take those things out. Um, now, this is what I call the dash plate. It's basically the backer of the dash. Um, again, this on the top, you had to spray these down a lot with the PV blaster. Uh, it was hard to get them out, and, and you'll notice by my changes of outfits throughout this next bit of video, over how many days I had to work on get, getting those handful of screws out along the top. Uh, it was really quite a nightmare. So I thought leaning on it would make it a little bit better. Um, and didn't really make a difference. It still wouldn't turn. I, I went through about three different Torx bits uh, throughout the, the course of just those screws. And I finally just said, screw it. And I'm going to start drilling them out. I wish I would have started there. There's a lot of places where you can't really drill them out. It won't be very uh, helpful to do so. But this is one of the places where you just drill them out and call yourself lucky. Because this whole thing comes out anyway. And you can get access to the screws and completely remove them. I think this is the last one I had to screw out. Again, the water seems to gather right in front of the steering wheel. That's where all the Jeeps rust. I'm not really sure why. That's where this one rusted out and ultimately why I had to replace the steering wheel. Or pardon me, the, uh, the windshield. All right, so climate control system is out and trying to take the dash plate out. Uh, discovering the steering wheel is in the way. That's a little bit frustrating. Uh, throughout this, you don't often see this because I, I edited it out, but I, all the wires, when I disconnect them, I would label them with my label maker to say this is exactly where that wire came from, where it connects to. And I take a lot of pictures throughout. You'll notice that I have my phone out snapping pictures. I've, I've probably got 500 pictures just to this point. So here we go. We take the steering wheel out. Uh, I actually had to go and buy a steering wheel remover to finish this from Princess Auto. And, uh, it's me putting that on right here. Um, once it was on, this was actually quite easy to take off compared to some of the other grief that I was dealing with. And it pops right off. And now I can get the dash plate finally off. All right, let's try something else. I'm going to work on the doors and some of the cable runs I took out before this video started. Uh, fairly simple. And now jumping into the ventilation system. So the intake off the top comes off quickly and then around the motor housing. Uh, just some normal hex bolts to pull that thing out of there. And out that comes it attaches through the top. So you actually have to take out the vent that's above the or behind the hood there. And that's what holds that in. Now this one, it took me a while to figure this out, but there's actually four bolts that hold this thing onto the firewall, and you can only get them from the other side. Uh, there's one on the left side, two on the right side, and one in the middle. Um, the ones on the right-hand side, the bottom one where the motor is there, is underneath the battery tray, and it's a little bit hard to get your hands on it, but I managed to get that out. Taking out the gear shifters, Again, this is easy compared to some of the other stuff I was dealing with. Just hex bolts here. Uh, there's the outer seal, which is what I'm removing here. And then there's also an inner one as well. Uh, I discovered that the outer one of mine was, was ripped, so I'll have to order a new one. And both these pieces just thread off like that. And done with the gear shifters. And there's that base grommet there. Boot boot. That's what they call those. It's time to start tackling the steering column. Uh, it's held up to the upper side of the dash uh, with some brackets. I've already kind of removed the lower collar here. And it's kind of slow work. Uh, there's the bolts kind of wrapping it that go towards the firewall. Those are obvious. And then back in the engine bay, uh, you take out the one bolt along 
the top of the knuckle, and then the whole thing pulls right out quite easily. So now I'm taking off what's left of the bracket up on the top. I seem to have removed some of it before the video even started here. Uh, this part here got really difficult because I couldn't get my sockets in there. So I came around the other side and discovered that sort of that back, back of the brake system there, uh, you can actually loosen them from the back side, uh, which is unique because most of the other bolts are welded right into the firewall where these ones were, were just separate bolts. So that's a key thing that will save you a lot of time. I uh, also took off uh, where the, the slave or the this clutch cylinder was is attached as well. And then these things just pull right through the firewall and out of the way. And that's the, uh, the uh, throttle and some of the wires and some of the vacuum hoses here. All right, starting to get cleaned up. Next, uh, I want to move the remaining fuse box. So there's two screws from the front, and then there's a hex head screw from the back that holds the whole connector together. And when you remove that, you can disconnect the whole thing and remove the entire wiring harness, which was an exciting time when that finally came out. And removing the windshield washer hoses right here and then into the parking brake. Um, ended up just using... Uh, pair of lock pliers to kind of pull out the cable from the pedal. So there we go. Now just kind of cleaning up the back end. These are all the remaining mounts for the seats, seat belts, what have you that I just haven't tackled before. Again, these are easy after doing it underneath the dash for uh, what ended up being several weeks of, you know, a few hours here and a few hours there. Uh, all in all, the strip down of the interior took me from about uh, middle of October to end of November. So, yeah, about six weeks for the whole thing. Uh, not working too hard, but probably all in all, somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to 15 hours. So here it is, all cleaned out, vacuumed up. Not in bad shape, considering the inside of this tub has never been painted. That's original factory paint on the inside, although the outside was painted. I still have the e-brake cable coming through there, uh, but that's about it. You see the transmission up under the dash, uh, nice and clean. So going to be ready for paint in the not too distant future once I repair some of that rust damage. So there you go. That's how I removed the entire interior of my 92 Jeep YJ. Uh, it's a painful project, but I think it's probably easier than a lot of other vehicles. If they just not use those Torx head bolts, uh, life would have been a lot better. So that's that. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, stick around for the rest of the series as we tackle getting the body off of this thing.